In the previous video, I showed you how you can connect your WAN link using two Cisco routers. These are Cisco 2600 series routers and I'm um, uh, displaying this inside a virtual lab environment. We put IP addresses on this link and we also specified the clock rate. And to view the IP addresses, I'll just make that known. Just call to spread this out a bit. And next, I just want to show how to design an actual internetwork. And then in the next video, you will see how routing will take place between the different networks. So I'll begin by plugging in two switches, one on each side. And I'll add four hosts, two on each side. And you can sort of imagine these routers at two remote locations, one halfway across the world uh, at point A, and point B is at the other half of the world. As long as you have a connection from one point to the next, you can form a basic internet work using uh, the TCP IP protocol, which, which I'll be showing in this video. So I'll connect the switch to my router's fast Ethernet interface. I'll connect the host to the switch. On both sides. So these two hosts, once you can get connectivity between two hosts on your network, and of course once routing is configured, you can basically, and you understand how that works, you can basically get connectivity between 2,000 hosts on the network. So this right now is a basic internet work as far as physical connectivity is concerned. But I do need to assign some IP addresses to the host, and I do need to assign some IP addresses to the router's interface. So I'll begin by configuring the Exuma router right over here and I'll give this interface an IP address so that it can communicate with the host on this network. So I'm going to go into the Fast Ethernet 00 interface and I'll give it the IP address 192 168.1.1 and subnet mass 255.255.255.240. The subnet mass will allow approximately 14 hosts, exactly 14 hosts on the network. And uh, the process of subnetting is pretty simple. I'll create two uh, dissimilar subnets and I'll have routing between these subnets using classless subnetting. I'll turn this interface on uh, by using the no shut command. And that's all I need to do for this particular interface. Now, if I want the host to communicate with this interface, if I want them to communicate with this interface, I need to give them IP addresses as well. And those IP addresses must be in the same subnet as this interface. So I'm going to go into the configuration of the host, and I'll just name it PC1. And I'm going to give it the IP address 192.168.1. Two. Now, if you watched one of my previous videos, I turned a 2950 switch into a DHCP server. So right now, I'm statically configuring these IP addresses. However, if you're inside a real environment, you can actually use a DHCP server to dynamically give up these addresses. Because if you had 2,000 computers on either end, you'll have a problem <laughs> with trying to uh, manually address all those machines. Now, my default gateway has to be the IP address on this physical interface right here because this is the only interface uh, leading out to the other subnet. So the default gateway is, I like to call it the gateway of last resort because when traffic or packets are destined for hosts outside this local network, they're sent to the default gateway and then routed to the appropriate destination. So that's fine. Notice that the subnet mask is the exact same subnet mask I used on the interface. So I'll configure this host as well. I'll call it PC2. I'll give it 192.168.1.3 255.255.255.240 
and the default gateway of course is the same because like I said with host outside this local network the default gateway needs to be the router's interface okay so over here I have 191 1.2 and 1.1 .1. so everyone here is on the same network from the serial interfaces the two serial interfaces will be on the same network and these guys will also be on their own network so we'll have three different networks all interconnected and that's basically how we'll form this inter-network. So I'll begin by giving this fast Ethernet interface an IP address. Go into privilege mode, global config, go into the interface, and I'll give it the address 192.168.2.1. Well, I'll give it 1.17. 1 and I'm going to give it the same subnet mask that I gave the previous router however by me using the number 17 I automatically put this interface on a completely different subnet if you want to cause problems with routing make two networks uh, put two networks on the exact same uh, subnet and you may cause some problems with some routing protocols so just to be safe I'm going to put them on different subnets so we can facilitate clean proper routing turn the interface on and that's it I need then that's all I need for this particular router okay I didn't get a connection here let's see what I did wrong okay okay so here's what I did wrong I configured this addressing on the fast Ethernet 01 interface so as a quick fix instead of going back and configuring it on another interface I will just physically disconnect this cable from this port and I will connect a switch to the configured port fast ethernet 01 there we have it so I'll just configure the host I'll name this PC PC3 IP address 192.168.1.18 with the subnet mask and the default gateway is you guessed it 1.17 it has to be the IP address of the router's interface so that PCs over here can get traffic to the remote location I can figure this machine here as well I'll call it PC4 and I'll give it the address 192.168.1.18 with the exact same subnet mask because of course we want these guys on the same network and the same default gateway so there you have it now host on this network should be able to ping everyone on the 192.168.1.16 network so PC3 should be able to ping PC4 and also the router's interface so let's try that from PC3, I'm going to try and ping 192.168.1.17. Okay, I get replies, so that's good. And I'm going to try to ping the other computer, 192.168.1.19. And lo and behold, I get replies. So this side is configured correctly. And in a previous video, I illustrated how this router can ping this router's serial interface. So let's see if this PC can ping this router's interface and, uh, and, and another PC. Ping 192.168.1.1. That's the IP address of the router's interface. I get replies, so that's good. And we are ping 192.168.1.3. That's the other PC's uh, IP address. So that's fine. Now, here's why we need routing. We need routing because if I... PC1 all the way to PC4 or PC3 I won't get replies and that's because these routers don't have a route inside their routing table to get to these locations so just configuring these addresses and plugging it in won't get connectivity you need to actually tell the router how it is it is going to find the remote network and that's what I'm going to show you on 
on our next video. So let me just demonstrate to you what I'm talking about. If I try to ping someone over here, so I'm on PC1, and I try to ping PC3, uh, what's the reply? 192.168.1.18. Okay, I get request timed out. And that's a layer 3 error. And that error is telling me that, hey, uh, the router could not find a route to that destination. So in the next video, I'll show you how to between, between these networks protocol called OSPF and of course this is all using Cisco routers. I hope this video has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.